Switching it over, and fingers crossed, I think we should be all on the server. And um, obviously we're not live as, as people are standing still, but we do have actual actual team members on a cache. Alright. Are uh, eyebrows considered facial hair? Uh, that's a tough question. That's a really tough question. Favorite esports other than Counter Strike? Probably, probably Dota, yes. Never got into League of Legends, so can't even say if it's good or bad or anything, but, but Counter Strike was. Uh, Counter Strike and Dota for me is like a cool combination. Um, and it's nice that they're both Valve games, I, I presume. Really big fan, fan of StarCraft, but got really confused after Wings of Liberty when Heart of the Swarm came out. I just had no idea what was going on anymore. They brought in the WCS system, which was even more confusing. Um, so, I guess StarCraft 2, going back to Brood War as well. Okay, enough questions now. Not that it hasn't been fun, guys, but really should focus on this match just a little bit. Um, oh, and I just need to change one setting that I always forget about. There we go. Alright, so, what we're going to be witnessing here is TSM versus Flipside, who have apparently turned American since last time they were here. Really a CIS team, obviously. And it's going to be on cash. It's for the ESL ESCA Pro League. And it's the eighth play day here. Best of one game on cash. So thank you very much for hanging out with me for such a long time. And, and you know, asking questions. Keeping me occupied in the chat. Um, obviously, I will continue to try and read the chat as much as I can. So, um, yeah. Ask away. And I'll do my best to, uh, to try and be on it. Should be coming up any second now with the, uh, with the actual game. It's not live yet, guys. But it will be hopefully soon enough. Hmm. Uh, question now, who would make a good NA team? Win. That's really hard. NA Counter-Strike is, uh, is really weird right now. I think... I, I still think the, the main problem that North American Counter-Strike has is a collective... sort of a collective uh, culture that they need to change. There needs to be... A uh, culture of practice and a culture of hard work and wanting to put in that time uh, to really make it work and getting the most out of your practice. I think those are actually the main issues. The players themselves, I think, have the talent and a lot of them are hungry enough. But it's hard staying hung hungry in a in a culture where, you know, not maybe everyone is or some people feel like it's not like a real, you know, it's not like a real sport or it's not like a real thing. I'm just kind of doing this part time, but I'm pretty good at it. You need people to commit 100%, and um, hopefully we'll see that. So, yeah, that's a weird answer, perhaps, but that's that's it. Mm -mm. Oh, are we finally there? <clears throat> yeah, uh, simple has been been banned for, for from these uh, from these leaks for quite a while now, um, and try to actually dodge the ban as far as I know. So I end up getting rebanned, which is very annoying on his part. I wish he hadn't done that, uh, but that's just how it is. So they're playing with cyber focus instead. It's old news, really, um, at this point. Most underrated player in your opinion. Oh, uh, this is a hard question to answer. It's always hard whenever someone asks, you know, who's under or overrated. You always risk answering that question and having 10 people message you on Twitter saying, oh, this guy's not underrated. Everyone knows he's amazing. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think now. I had, I just this, uh, like, the last couple of days, there's a guy that's been on my mind. Okay, do you, okay, we can go super hipster with this one. I will actually do that. I would say, because he's not playing right now, so it's kind of hard to have a player be underrated that isn't really playing. But he, I heard a rumor that he was going to play a little bit. So I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to pick Spanish player Aguilar, who's um, Spanish for Eagle, apparently. Uh, used to play for Wizards and a bunch of other teams um, in the Spanish circle. No idea how good his English is, but if it was good enough to be in a, in like in a, in a top team, then yeah, look out for him. Right now, not active, so I guess it's a little bit of a of a weird answer, but yeah, Spanish player, really good. I've got my hopes crossed that he's uh, my finger. All right, so um, when am I going to be making videos about uh, maps that aren't train? Hopefully soon enough. Actually, the next video that I've got coming up is on cash. 
And I'm, I've got a couple of things that I'm dying to show you guys. And I guess now that we're on cash, it would be tempting to try and pull some of it out. But that would kind of ruin the idea of making videos, wouldn't it? And um, also, it would require a bit of explanation. I can't really do much. Obviously, everyone's left the server. It's just me now, all alone. Sorry about that, but um, I'm sure we'll get another server that they'll be back on any second now. Hmm. Let me just ask here. <coughs> Yeah, so Cache is definitely a map that has a lot of potential, in my opinion, uh, for developing and exploring new things. And um, that's that's probably what I'm going to try and do next. Uh, oh, right. So, in your opinion about the... D -d 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 yeah, a lot of people still use the M4A1 on the pro level. So, pe I've seen this uh, topic come up over at the subreddit. People are talking about whether or not there needs to be some sort of change... Maybe yes, I don't know. I actually I actually suck at coming up with balance changes for weapons. Um I don't know. Maybe there should be a change to the prices or something else. Or maybe there shouldn't be. That's really hard to say actually. The YouTube channel guys again, um just in case anyone is missing it because people are asking. It's in the chat right there. <coughs> If you guys do have some cool spots or something you want to show me on some of the map, um, then absolutely uh, just message me on uh, just message me on Twitter. Send me a tweet and I'll try and take a look at it. I'll try and respond as well as fast as I uh, as fast as I can. All right, maybe with a with a little bit of luck, maybe we can um, we can actually get Moses on here. That would be great. Moses is such a cool guy. I would love that. Um, and actually, we're trying to switch servers anyway. So, how about this, ladies and gentlemen? How about this? If I more things seem to be working here again, I'm really sorry. It's been a crazy evening already, and we haven't even seen a game yet. But we seem to have found a server that works. We seem to have found at least nine out of ten people who will play on this server, and I'm here, Jason. Not quite here yet. I'm um, not sure if he's got the time. Obviously, he wasn't really meant to cast tonight. Um, uh, but I'll try and see if I can persuade him to get on here. It'd be great if he wanted to join up with me, of course. Um, that's Moses from, uh, from the ESCA channel. Super great guy. And uh, with a little bit of luck, I can persuade him to, to join me here for this cast. So we'll see how that all unfolds. In fact, let me just see if I can get him on this server. And it'll be amazing. Um... Alright, I think maybe he can join me for the next one. Yeah, I think Jason's going to join me for the next game, hopefully. And uh, for this one, you'll have me instead. So, if you are just joining us, then uh, let me start off with apologizing for uh, for a bit of a crazy start to the evening. But now we seem to be finally ready. We've got TSM playing up against Flipside. And this is the ESCA ESL Pro League. And we're on cash for a best of one game. I'm Anders, and I'm glad you guys uh, stuck around and wanted to hang out with me here. Simple will not be playing tonight. It's going to be Cyberfocus playing instead. And the rest of the flip side lineup is World Edit, Blade, Bondic, and Markolov, and on TSM, we've got Sipnix, who believes his name is supposed to be uh, pronounced Sipex, but that train has uh, already left the, the station a long time ago. Device, KGNB, Carrigan, and Dupree, who somehow has a one up in front of his name. I'm not sure what that is about. And now we're finally live with Cash. So let's see how it's all going to unfold here. A lot of presence over at B and a perfect flashbang. Though Cajun will take down Bon Dick Markolov with a return kill on device here. And Dupree showing himself eight bullets left. And he's going to go down. Strong start there for Markolov with a double. Cage in the background. One clicks. Cyper focus away. A little bit too much speed. Now they actually boost Markolov back out through the vents. And... That's a bold strategy. If he goes down mid here with a bomb, that's a big problem. Look at Sipnix. He hears it coming. He heard someone running. The counter rotation coming out. Carrigan already out. Sipnix could have probably killed Markolov then, and that would have been a huge advantage. But they let him slip right through their fingers, and that's going to be a plant here coming in now for flip side. But Markolov will be alone. 1v3. He goes down. Cajun. Third headshot of the round for him. And pretty much a perfect start here for TSM. You know, a little bit scary in the beginning when um, when Sipnix let him run, but he played it safe. It's not the wrong decision, but it's just, uh, you know, from our point of view, it looked like that could have been at the end of the round already. But Cajun with the headshots just closing it out. And that will be it. 
I like the idea from Flipside, though. Uh, showing a bit of presence. I think when Cyber Focus went down, I'm wondering if their plan all along was to show their presence here and then boost back out through vents, or if they actually wanted to sort of go for it, but then once they lost Cyber Focus, maybe the, they lost a little bit of, uh, of heart to try and actually take that fight. Hard for us to know at that point in time. Device got shot in the face while jumping to look over the box by what? By T P250 that was wielded by Blade. That's got to be annoying, right? No armor on anyone on the flip side, but obviously they did put the bomb down. They want to be able to buy in the next round, so not much of an issue there either. Morgan just holding in the middle. Good flick there, but he also got tagged in the face. And now they've got to be a little bit careful because this Tech-9 is making its way closer. And so is the rest of flip side. Device back here. UMP, and in fact, there's two UMPs in play right now. The other one on Dupree. Blade will take down Carrigan, who was already uh, softened up by Markolov. And then good grenade there from Sipnix. And the follow up from Cajun means the round is going to be pretty much over. And TSM only losing Carrigan, so a decent position regardless, although it looked a little bit scary. Going into the third round. It's already a buy for Flipside, which is not really going to be a surprise to any of us. Glad that they brought a Molotov. Could be used in so many ways. Uh, I guess the most common one these days is probably trying to Molotov turn off the vents here. And Markov is actually running that way to, to make it work anyway. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we're going to see. But um, first, he's going to go and check the the squeak over here and just make sure that no one's pushing in. There's a nice angle here to, uh, to try and cover that from the rest of the team. Making their way over towards B, and Dupree must have spotted someone there, but then there was a little bit of smoke, and he only has a UMP, so taking a fight versus all these people is going to be tricky, but Cajun B, here comes the flashbang in, and there it is, Dupree going to try and peek out, but this UMP is just not that powerful, it's hard for him to sit down and take a full spray fight without getting uh, downed immediately, well did it here, he's going to get shot in the face, did he not have head armor, Dupree with a second kill, and Cyberfocus did have head armor, so he's definitely not going to be living uh, for much longer. That was just two headshots straight to the face. Great aim. Carrigan goes down to Markolov. Is it too late, though, for Flipside? I mean, they've already lost two people. Getting run in return feels good, but they need a little bit more. And Dupree's still being annoying back here. Markolov also goes down. That's a triple kill from Dupree. Playing from Sweden now, by the way, where he's moved up. And he's even applied for a citizenship, apparently. Goes down eventually to Bondic. Bomb is delivered right to the feet of Cajun B, meaning now Bondic's alone. And he's going to get taken out. Smooth work from TSM. Not really much trouble at all here. In the fourth round. Not a lot that they could do. If they had got the bomb down, maybe they could have gone for a mad force up if they could have done that. But um, since they're playing the less favorite side anyway... It might not be worth it for them to keep fighting this, really. Rush. Well, a bit of a push going on over towards the A-bomb side. Not really a rush, because they do slow down. Trying to find the right timing. Device finds almost the perfect timing for that grenade. And it's going to pick up World Edit with the AK to follow up. Cyber Focus going to go down as well. No issue there. Spray keeps going out. Device getting a couple of kills stolen for him here. He was working on a nice streak. We'll get the triple in the end, but I think he was looking for a little bit more. His greedy teammates were there to steal it away from him. Fifth round up now, and let's see what Flipside can show us. Now is where, I mean, this is not a problem. 4 0 is not a big deal right now when you're Flipside, but you want to start connecting a little bit more because the money on TSM, at least on everyone except for Carrigan, he's really poor at the moment, but everyone else has got a really good bank going on for them. So they need to make a big dent here and preferably win the round. And they've bought three Molotovs, so you know that I'm already a fan. We spoke about the one Molotov event, but with three of them, uh, there's always the chance that they're going to try and firebomb out this corner and actually even behind the, the site here. A lot of, uh, lot of uh, ways to utilize those Molotovs, and we've seen them time and again. I bet you guys already know what I'm talking about, so we'll see how it's going to play out. There's the vent uh, Molotov, and Cajun is forced back, which actually decreases the mid-control a little bit. And you can see Cyber Focus takes out Device by pushing into middle, and he doesn't have to worry about vent. He knows no one's there, so um, definitely a good a good trade up there for flip side. Now they're going to focus a little bit. There's another Molotov into the corner. Flashbang out. That tanks Sipnix perfectly. Well done. Grenade follow up. And Blade still goes down. Sipnix just a little bit too fast. 
and they're gonna lose Cyber Focus as well. It's all on Markolov and World Edit now, and they gotta bring this back somehow. 2v3 with 40 seconds left. They need to win this round. Counter grenades coming out. Cajun almost dropping to that quick flick for Markolov. And there's the headshot. Nicely done, Markolov. That looked like an unlikely shot. And he's gonna be taking down Carrigan as well, so it's all on Dupree now. 1v2. Running in. Picks up the first headshot there on World Edit. And it is going to be a 1v1 now. Dupree trying to see if he can sneak up on the box. Get a better angle on Markolov. He sees him back there and he will take him out as well. Markolov losing a bit of patience. And felt like he had to go and get the information. Making sure Dupree wasn't sneaking up on him. So that's going to be a double now for the Danish player. And TSM barely winning the round. But better than Flipside who uh, are now five rounds down. Into the sixth round we go. And we're going to see if Flipside can come up with something that's just a little bit better. I mean, that round started off well. I think maybe the key moment was Blade losing the fight to Sipnix over by Forklift. If he doesn't do that, the bomb stays alive for a lot longer and they have the man advantage and everything is just working out. That one death really um, came back to haunt them here. Not a cool angle by Markolov, in fact. Just all the way up on the electric... Uh, Boxes back here, looking in. That's going to be hard to see if you're coming in from a terrorist point of view. You're not going to be expecting someone to be up there. So I'm um, definitely liking that. Dupree to pick up the one kill there on Cyber Focus and really trying to get away into the smoke here. Going to flashbang and then escape into checkered room. So playing it safely, which is the right call without a doubt. And Blade is going to try and fall back. We'll pick up the bomb. They do have a bit of a boost going on in the middle, just a single person, and I think here comes uh, the Molotov once again in towards the vents. No one's there this time though, Dupree's sort of underneath it, but it is going on right above him. In the meantime, as they push into the middle, they're going to run into the vice. Just going to put up a bit of a grenade. That will only do one damage to Blade, so not really worth the investment, but are they going to counter boost? Yeah, they will. Look at this. They're waiting for it. The timing is great right here. Cajun going to come out. Instant kill on World, did it? And I don't think he actually spotted out Bondic, who's now alone. But in the meantime, obviously, Blade fell as well to device and Bondic, not much of a chance here. Th that counter boost into vent that they just did on the on the TSM side is always going to be good, but it's even better when they've just thrown a Molotov in there because sort of almost in instinctively they they're not going to check it. They're going to think, well, we've already firebombed it out. No one is going to be there. Bondic can't win the round in longer time. Has run out. He did get a parting kill on one person, and now he just wants to save the AK here. So let's see how it goes. Uh, good kill on Cajun as well. Stays alive with the AK and actually saves a lot of uh, grenades as well. So a bit of a bonus. Flipside going to buy once again. It's right now 6-0 and in favor of TSM. And it's starting to get a little bit out of control. If you guys aren't uh, paying attention here, you can tell that it's it's slipping now out of Flipside's hands. 4-0 wasn't too bad. 6-0 is a little bit more scary, though. They've at least done economic damage in the last couple of rounds. And Carrigan ready with the Molotov, ready with the AWP in middle to try and secure that mid-control, which is always going to be important on Mirage. Oh, flip side have in mind, they are out of Molotovs, which is another problem that they're going to keep running into now, that their economy is struggling more and more is they have fewer tools to actually work with. Although the double boost is always uh, it's always a fan favorite, isn't it, when you're playing on the T side here. Well, that it goes down, so I guess part of the boost is already gone, but a good fight as Cyber Focus is going to win out against Dupree over by Checkered. So just trading evenly at the moment. Sipnik's device, Cajun and Kerrigan are still alive on that CT side. And where are they going to bring this bomb flip side they've got one smoke which means pushing b could be a little bit tricky because you need a smoke for upper and for the ct spawn if you only have one could end up getting picked off trying to cross on over and they actually use it over at the a bomb side as a bit of a fake which just draw device back and then they make their way in for middle you can see the bomb now going in through vents here they've got no smokes to cover up so they got to kill cage and b and there's the shot Blade with a perfect timing. Carrigan will drop one though. Flashbang out trying to buy time. He doesn't hit the quick scope then. And it's going to be Device taking down another guy. And Markolov will give revenge by Cyber Focus. Sipnix almost with the kill, but there's no time. He has to run now. Sipnix, I don't think they can get the bomb down in time here. 
Oh no, he slowed him down just enough that he couldn't get up on the platform and he's going to go for Bondic as well. Won't win the fight, but will win the round. 7-0, and zero. and TSM are off to too much of a strong start here. This is quickly getting out of control. Well, the 8th round just starting now. Flip side. They're just not making much headway, are they? TSM seems to have an answer to almost anything that they throw at them. And I feel like we've not even seen TSM really doing something extraordinary at the moment. The counter boost into Vent is maybe the, maybe the most exotic play we've seen so far. But there hasn't been any aggressive boosting going or any aggressive plays going into main. There's been nothing going on over at Squeak. They haven't tried to counter boost in the middle. There's a whole range of tactics that haven't been uh, put into use here by the Danish team. So that means even if Flipside start winning rounds now, TSM can probably switch it up and make it life really hard on them. So this is turning into one hell of a one-sided match at the moment. Which actually flips on have been doing too well recently. Uh, and again, it comes back to this issue that we keep talking about of simple um, being out of the out of the loop for them on so many tournaments. So they keep having to switch people in. Like I said earlier, it's not that cyber focus is necessarily a, a bad stand-in, but you've got to play with your full team a little bit more than Flipside are currently doing. Bondic will go down, so will Markolov there. So it's all on Blade, getting shot in the middle. And we'll go for the fight once again. Derice with an easy pickoff and a triple kill, putting him at 10, 2, and 4. And we're looking at an 8 and 0 oh scoreline. Wow. We're in the ninth round here. Flipside are actually now at a point where even even in spite of their round loss bonus, which is now all the way up, obviously it, it maxes out at five rounds in a row. So they're getting a lot of money for losing, but they still cannot buy because they're not even getting bomb plants. And that's obviously a big problem here. They're missing out of the $800. Molotov goes out here from Sipnix, but it will be Device to pick up the first kill. Keeps spraying through, and I think that was almost the last bullet to connect with Bondic's face. And as Markolov goes down, Blade is actually going to be the last man standing there. Sipnix just shooting at his teammate, or was well did it? Ah, he was sneaking up from behind. Fair enough. 9 and 0. Oh. What do you guys think? This is, uh... This is turning into a bit of a stomp, isn't it? <laughs> For everyone asking, where is Semler? Well, Semler, he's stuck in uh, in London uh, for another day after having been at Gfinity. So you're going to be stuck with me for the evening. Although, with a little bit of luck, maybe we'll be able to bring in Moses for the next game. That would be amazing. Cyber Focus to pick up the quick kill there on Sipnix, and that's what they need. That's exactly the cyber pick they would have if Symbol was playing this game with them. And we've got World did it with an AWP on his side too. So double AWP setup coming out from the terrorist side. Slightly unusual, but Flipside actually do love doing this on a bunch of maps, even when Symbol is here as well. Blade exchanging a couple of bullets with Dupree, which is really dangerous. AK versus M4. That M4A1 is going to have such an advantage on the other side of the smoke because he's going to be able to see exactly where you sh you're shooting, and the same will not be true the other way. Bomber sneaking its way back to A. This could work. One good flashbang or one good smoke to block off Carrigan here. And they could get it, uh, they get the entry they need. Grenade on in. Carrigan gonna smoke it off and that's actually gonna buy a lot of time here. Are they gonna wait for it though? It feels like they just wanna go for it. Molotov near perfect timing again. Carrigan, think of the time he's bought here. And yes, they can't wait any longer. They feel like they have to go so they're already out onto the site. Flashbang over to buy a little bit more time, and the backup is coming. Device is really close as well by the barrels, and he's going to be running in with the M4 in hand, actually mid-reload, but still, Carrigan with two kills before he falls. It is now a 2v1, and Cyber Focus, he can't even make it out of Squeak. He's still stuck back here. First it was the Molotov, then it turned into a smoke, and once it fades and he walks out, his whole team is dead, and TSM win that round, no problem. Great work from, from Carrigan. Flipside want to push Squeak and they want to push, well, they don't want to push through the wall. They want to push Squeak and they want to push through main at the same time. So he uses the smoke first here. That means the people waiting Squeak are obviously getting the call and saying, well, we'll have to wait 15 seconds before we can go. 
Then once that fades, he throws over Molotov. That means the people at Squeak are going to make the call back to Main and say, wait a minute, now there's a Molotov. And at that point, the people at Main say, well, we can't wait any longer. We're going to have to go anyway. And the whole push becomes a little bit disjointed from uh, from Flipside's point of view. They don't end up coordinating as well as they otherwise could have. So Carrigan doing a lot. And then on top of that, he got a double kill. So pretty great round for him, actually. 11th round up. And we'll see. Flipside yet to connect a single round here against TSM. This is turning into something else. Sipnix waiting in the corner. Going to be spraying in and putting some damage on to Blade. He's down to half HP. Look at the presence here. Four people waiting by this bomb site. Blade trapped in the corner as well, trying to get out and take the fight, but Sipnix ends up dropping. And now it's all on Cyber Focus coming up speedway quick, but he's going to get shut down. This isn't this isn't even a battle anymore. This is just TSM essentially punishing Flipside. Maybe they feel pressure, TSM, because obviously we didn't have that big delay in the beginning. Maybe they feel like, okay, the big delay, how do we get the schedule back on track? How about we 60 know them right here and we move on with the with the evening? This is kind of hard for Flipside, because as I said, they're going to be playing three games tonight. Another one versus Hellraisers, and the next one against Mouse Sports. So, I mean, if they are not feeling on point, if they're not feeling on form right now, definitely a bit of a struggle for them this evening. Grenade on over. Ow, that's a monstrous grenade. Bondic actually has to run away behind that one. He's afraid a second one will be the follow-up. That did 50 damage in one. And then Kerrigan to pick up the kill on Blade. I'm trying to think about what the what a good play right now would be for uh, for Flipside. Because they've been trying a bunch of different things, but none of it really seems to work. I do feel like the the initial plan they had, getting the mid control by Molotoving out vents, was pretty decent. Maybe they just need a little bit more pace on their side, a little bit more speed, essentially. Because they're taking these long, prolonged fights, fights with TSM, and TSM are simply coming out on top. So maybe once you, you do the initial part of the strat, you just commit to it and, and go all in after that. Bondic took down the vice who was coming up from behind. But that will be the end of the round. 12 and 0. And we are going to be moving into the 13th round. Pistols, a little bit of armor. Again, flip side. At this point, you really don't want to be stuck in this position. They've got some nice cohesion going on with six kills across the board except for World Edit, who's a little bit behind. But, um... Trying to come up with, uh, you know, positive things to say about Flipside at the moment. At least, they're all doing equally badly, that's what I'm trying to say. Harsh as it may sound. Two men down already as Cajun picked up a couple. Which means now... They're going to go for the kill in the middle here on Device, but he's not going to crumble so easily. Bondic, the pretty good peek there on uh, Sipnix, but now the infantry has arrived, and that's a one-click there. Banana, 5-7. and 0. This is slowly but surely getting completely out of control, isn't it? This is a crushing defeat for Flipside at the moment. They're going to go for the double up setup again between Cyber Focus and World Edit. And last time around, Cyber Focus did get a really clean, good pick off in the middle. And they still weren't able to follow up on it. This time he's going to run for B, which is a good spot to try and get a pick off. It's going to be a couple of seconds late to catch Dupree heading in towards Checkered. Still means he can hold outside and maybe just hope for an opening on somebody. A little bit worried, actually, that they're going to be counter-boosting back there. You can boost up to look through those, wi with those windows. Um, not the most common boost, but definitely one that we've seen a couple of times in the past. Now, the setup over here. Markolov, he's got the Molotov. Maybe we can catch like a really cinematic uh, view here. Actually, they're all going to be throwing smokes instead. So, smoking going on. Markolov. Where is that Molotov? They're going to smoke like it's an A-push and then run back out. Go for the boost up here. No, not yet. There's one guy boosted. 
And actually, we'll spend a little bit of time, but they're trying to really throw out a, a bit of an elaborate fake, really. And it's not working out so well. Dupree taking a fight with Cyber Focus, exchanging roughly equal damage. But TSM are still at this bomb site with two people. Now, that kill from Bonnick, though, is going to make a big difference. That means now Device is sort of trapped up here. He can't go back in middle, or he's going to get found out. He will go down. Sipnix now holding this entire A-bomb side on his own. So this actually works out for flip side. They've come up with something really good here, but Sipnix will kind of a double kill, and Bonnick finally takes a kill, but he's so close to no scope to take down Cajun. Well played on Bonnick's part. That's a great triple kill. Now he's got 10 seconds to find the bomb, put it down, and then win this fight against Dupree. He should be able to do it He's got the health advantage. He's got the AWP and a Molotov. All he needs to know is where Dupree is. And now I think he's got a big good clue here. Those shots raining on through. Bit of a flash bang out. Dupree goes down. And Bondic picks up a quad kill to win the first round for Flipside. Very well done. Well, the 15th round is now coming up, and we'll see. I already see people in the chat saying, come back, the comeback is real, now it's time. I don't want to crush anyone's dreams, but I feel like that is definitely not going to happen. This is this is not a well-functioning flip side at the moment. Nice flick from Carrigan, he's still getting shot, and has to retreat around the corner, down to 50 HP. I think that might have been Markov actually wall-banging him through. Well, that it comes out, but he drops as well. Markolov and Blade will be the last two people remaining in a 2v5. I'll make that a 2v4 as they take out Carrigan. Grenades raining on in. Blade still trying to take the fight. Markolov now alone. Trapped in the corner. We'll go down to Sipnix. That's going to be 14 to 1. Wow. What a, what a crushing defeat here. Not much else to say about it. Oh, and we got briefly disconnected from the server. I'm sure we'll be right back in, guys. It's a bit of a... A common problem with some of these servers, but there shouldn't be too much longer and we'll be able to reconnect back in. Wow, 14 to 1 kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? That's a sign that uh, that something went horribly out of control for uh, for one team, basically. I'll try and reconnect back into the game, see if I can get back on the server. And indeed I can. Right, and they haven't started yet, so don't worry, don't panic. If you are just joining us, then obviously, um, big thanks for hanging out with me here this evening. The ESL ESCA Pro League. I'm Anders. Normally, Semler would be here with me, but he's stuck in London. Um, had to, to get back home to Sweden to do this broadcast, and he couldn't get there on time. Tragically for him, I think he's stuck in an airport somewhere. Now, we've got the second half coming up between Flipside and TSM. Definitely a bit of a rough matchup for Flipside. Um, we did predict that TSM would be the, the better team, but right now they're not just the better team. They are pretty much superior in every way. So that's kind of hard to deal with from Flipside's point of view. But we'll see if something is going to change here. Bondic playing close. Flipside playing with a lot of speed. And are they going to catch them boosting? That would be awful. Yeah, they give up on the boost. In fact, Blade bumping into them and... Oh no, they lose that bomb side instantly. A little bit of panic, and that round was done. They wanted to boost, then they realized they couldn't do the boost. Then they sort of run it to hide or run through the smoke, but they ran into TSM, and then they got steamrolled. So, not sure what to think about that. Markolov coming up from behind would be amazing, if not for the pre-catching him doing it. So now the word is out, the world. Edit will actually pick up a kill as well, so this is doable now. 3v3, nice headshot from Markolov, going for a little bit more here. Got eight bullets left, but he will drop to Carrigan, who's playing with a Tech-9 in Squeak, and that bomb is ticking away. Can they get it? Headshot on world Edit as he falls off the box, and Carrigan going for a little bit more. Ends up dropping, but Cyber Focus out of time, and everyone will explode. What a round there. TSM making it 15-1. to Well, it's going to be second round now coming up off the second half. And I'm not sure if Flipside could do much. No real surprise that they're going to be buying up. Of course, they are about to get knocked out of this best of one without much of an issue at all. So why not go for a couple of five sevens, a scout, or whatever you have. But look at this. They're getting overrun in the middle. Cajun device and Dupree 
One kill each. Markolov and World Edit left. And this is just a frag hunt now for TSM. They just want to see who can finish on top. And it's between Device, Carrigan, and Cajun. Whoever gets the last kill of its Carrigan or Cajun is going to tie with Device. Otherwise, he's going to run away with a trophy here. Top fragger of the game. And Markolov showing himself means that's almost certainly... Oh, actually, it won't happen. Markolov going to steal that one away. Sipnik's now going for it. Ends up dropping. And Dupree will end up with the final kill there. And that's a victory and a big one, obviously, for TSM. Just crushing flip side. No.